Hello again, I am Blunty. The thing I'm about to yank out of this plain looking box is a Pimax 4K UHD virtual reality PC headset and it was sent in by Gearbest. Links directly to the product in the usual place in my down below area. So. The Pimax 4K VR headset has some pretty fantastic things about it, also some less than ideal things about it too, but then again, that can be said about all of the current VR headsets, no matter how basic or fancy. They've all got some pretty aggressive pro-con balances going on, and whether or not it's worth spending money on comes down to how a balance is made and what you want from it. So let's break it down and have a look. On the physical side of things, I really quite like this headset. It's remarkably light for a start. On their website, they compare it to the weight of three eggs. I was unaware eggs were a standard unit of measure in China, but there you are. <laughs> I guess without the straps and cables, it would be somewhere close to three large chicken eggs, actually, so fair enough. Weird comparison to make there, right? The rest looks and feels very much like many VR headsets. Smooth plastics, a nondescript faceplate with a simple logo on it, a soft rubbery face mask frame rung around with some comfort foam, and with the overhead Velcro fastened elastic strap arrangement for keeping it on your face. It does set itself apart from most slightly by having its own headphones, which the side straps can feed through, and instead of trailing yet another cable down your back or to a belt box or something, these plug directly into the headset, making the single, relatively thin and lightweight cable that carries the HDMI and USB connections essential for making the thing work back to your computer the only cable. And that is pretty awesome, actually. It's a significant advantage over even the HTC Vive, which has a thick, wide, heavy cable bundle that I kind of hate, to tell you the truth. It's always been a pain in the ass. And those headphones fit quite nicely, too. And the sound is far better than I was expecting. They easily match the clarity and depth of decent headphones I've got that cost, you know, $50 or $80 or something like that. And you can adjust the volume with the controls on the headset itself. And of course, you don't have to use them if you prefer something else, but me, I'm actually quite happy with them. And it certainly makes the usability much easier and more convenient when it's just one thing to put on your head all at once instead of two separate things. It's always been slightly awkward to put a VR headset on then sort of fumble around blindly trying to put your headphones on correctly and all that sort of stuff. This is much better. The software that comes with it is relatively basic but quite functional, and it allows you to use the Pimax 4K in two modes. One, for its own games and videos and 360 photos accessed from its own software interface. The other, far more useful mode, makes it fully compatible with SteamVR. Hooray! And through a SteamVR plugin called Revive, you can even use it with apps and games native to the Oculus Store. But once I had it up and running, which took about you know, 10 minutes or so, the first thing I noticed when I put it on was how remarkably clear the image quality was. There's no screen door effect like there is with the Oculus and Vive, no fine paper-like texture that there is with the OSVR HDK2. It is very crisp, bright, clean, and clear. It's not the brightest screen I've ever seen in HMD, but it's certainly bright enough. There is some slight color banding in gradients, but nothing too severe. Only really noticeable usually if you go looking for it. I did also see very occasionally some slight flicker, but that's not a usual thing and it only happened like three or four times in hours of use, so barely worth mentioning. And the 110 degree field of view also puts it side by side with the Vive and the Rift and the HDK2. But the reason for the unusual clarity is in the name of course, the Pimax 4K VR. But it's actually not quite that simple. It's not really 4K, but it kind of is. Well, at least it's 4K enough for them to get away with calling it 4K in the name of the device and for them to be marketing it as the world's first 4K HMD. See, the resolution is certainly 3840 by 2160, also known as 4K, and that's a significant step up from the Oculus and Vive's 2160 by 1200. But... This is, of course, the sum resolution of both screens, one for each eye, added up together. The real figure, the per eye resolution, is, on the Pimax 4K, 1920 by 2160. And that, well, that's basically 2K resolution, 2 times 2 being 4. <laughs> but even the per eye number is a big step up from the HTC Vive, the Oculus Rift, and HDK2, which all have a 1080 by 1200 per eye resolution. And you can run the Pimax 4K in that common resolution if you wish. I had no compatibility issues in my testing in the higher resolution mode, but just in case you ever do run across something that was expecting the resolutions you get from the other guys, it's nice that a fallback is available. 
But of course, with extra resolution comes extra rendering demands, except it's not quite so clear here either, because while the Rift, the Vive, and the HDK2 all render their lower resolution at 90 frames per second, the Pimax 4K caps at 60 frames per second, which kind of loosely evens out the GPU requirements, high resolution, lower frame rate. This is, by the way, the same frame rate that the PlayStation VR uses, although the PlayStation VR does use a kind of interpolation trick to kind of pretend it's 120 frames per second. And by the way, Steam VR has a similar trick you can use. So that 60 frames per second isn't quite the handicap that it first seems. The screens also have slightly more motion blur than the HTC Vive. It's not huge and the refresh is still comparatively low latency, but if you look for motion trails, you'll see them especially on bright, hard edges. This and the 60 frames per second for some people will leave them a little more sensitive to motion sickness. I personally have been slightly sensitive to motion sickness in VR in the past, but surprisingly, the Pimax 4K left me feeling perfectly okay. You can certainly tell the difference between the lower refresh rate and the blur trail of bright edges, and it's not ideal, but I adjusted to it quickly, and it actually stopped bothering me much at all quite quickly in most applications. Perhaps the clarity of the image helped somewhat. Perhaps the highly responsive 1000 Hz sample rate of the motion tracking made up for it a bit, and that motion tracking does work really quite well, by the way. I don't know exactly why, I fully expected to feel a bit woozy, a bit sick. I certainly have done from time to time in other VR headsets, but across a few sessions I spent up to an hour or two inside this thing without any issue at all. There's no manual adjustment to the lenses, but the interpupillary distance is adjusted in software, just like the HDK2 handles it, and it works perfectly well. And even more remarkably, in use, the headset never even fogged up, an issue I have often with my HDK2, at least in the first 10 minutes or so. But the Pimax stayed utterly free of fogging 100% of the time, every time, only ever offering up the best image quality it was capable of. There's some slight blurriness at the edges of the lenses, but that is, of course, normal for the type of lenses needed to do VR like this. It is certainly quite subtle enough to be out of mind most of the time. Unfortunately, there's no relative positional tracking here. It's rotational only. That basically means there's no room scale VR possible and no leaning forward or back or dodging side to side and the like. And this will limit the kinds of games that are compatible with it, but there's still quite a few out there on Steam that will work perfectly well. The movie watching experience from 360 surround movies and photos to the virtual cinema 3D movie kind of experience was significantly better with this headset than any other I've tried. The lower refresh rate and lack of positional tracking are of no issue at all in this aspect of use, of course, and the high-resolution screen is a significant advantage here. That and the headset's lightweight, integrated headphones and relatively comfortable straps make a movie-watching experience pretty damn good, actually. With only one cable and two plugs on the end of that one cable, it's much simpler to set up than a Vive, but of course the Vive is far more functional, featuring full and proper room-scale VR and motion handsets and all that kind of stuff. But as I said, it's always a balancing act with VR right now. And if what you want is a truly great seated-only experience, the Pimax 4K is, to my honest surprise, a very serious contender and well worth considering. It, like the HDK2 I have, does not come with motion controls, but if you want that, there are third-party and sort of community hacky ways to get around that, with various levels of success. The Pimax 4K is a comparatively functionally restricted headset, but the simple job it does of a seated experience with smooth, effective rotational tracking, thanks to its unexpectedly great lenses and high-resolution screens, it does this job better than anything I've tried, including the HTC Vive, which is more than twice the price. Absolutely worth considering. It is not perfect, but within its wheelhouse, it's damn good. And on a personal note, I will be hanging on to this one myself. The camera-based positional tracking for my HDK2 still hasn't got its promised patch. and still doesn't quite work as well as I would have hoped, so I don't tend to use it when I'm using the HDK2 anyway. Meanwhile, the Pimax gets me vastly better image quality. It's even more comfortable. So it's kind of a simple choice to make when it comes to my new personal choice for seated VR. Thanks for watching. I am Bloody, and I will catch you next time.